Welcome back to another AAI automated vehicle tutorial guys. Thanks for hopping in. Uh, thanks for all the positive comments on the last video. That was really cool to come back from uh, vacation too. So the focus of this video today, as stated in the last one, we're going to be learning how to get these miners moving. And we're going to learn how to control multiple ones at the same time. So let's hop over to the building zone and just get right into it. Alright guys, we remember the scene here. We have our basic little if inventory is full, head back to the depot and then come on back once you're empty circuit here. So now what we're going to be looking at is this little circuit over here that I've built. I'm just going to turn it on to show you guys how it works. So this is what you saw in the uh, teaser of the last video to get these guys continuously moving. So it looks more complicated than it is, but I promise you it's not. Basically what it does is it looks for orange tiles, it finds one, it picks one, it sends the miner there, it waits one second, and then it picks a new tile and sends the miner there, and it just continuously loops that over and over again. That's it. It's not that hard, it's not scary, and it's going to be very easy to build. Let's jump right into it. However, real quick, before we get into the movement, I am just going to show you guys how to automatically search for ore zones. So if you don't want to do it by hand, you don't have to. You, of course, can if that's easier to you. You can just pick what you want, uh, highlight it, and there you go. You have your zone, shift, highlight to delete it. Simple. However, this is an automation game, so we don't want to be running around highlighting ore patches for our miners to uh, go mine at. We want them to find them th themselves. We have better things to do. So let's learn how to do that. Alright guys, since uh, this isn't really the focus of the video, I'm going to be linking a blueprint which explains how this whole circuit works uh, down in the uh, description. So I'm just going to show you what it does real quick. When you turn it on, it looks around, it finds ores, and it plops a zone down really, really fast. Awesome. And we can increase this radius even more. Now it'll search even more ore. All right, let's get into the meat and potatoes of this tutorial. This is what everybody came for. This is going to be continual movement. Uh, this is the part of AAI miners that most people really don't like, uh, and that's the miners have to be moving to mine. So this little circuit uh, allows this guy to never stop moving. Again, there's going to be a blueprint for this guy with a description down in the description. First brick, all it does is it takes in a uh, vehicle ID. It scans it with the unit scanner. It gets all this information from it, and we're going to read just this uh, time since last command signal. Also, this is the way to build a filter. If you have a lot of signals that you don't want to deal with and you just want one, you can just say the signal times one times the signal. So this is going to be kind of weird, but we're actually going to jump to block three here. So this is going to be very, very similar to the way that little uh, ore sniffer thing worked that I showed you guys just a few minutes ago. So we're going to send in two coordinates, uh, distance, and that's just going to scan around uh, that coordinate. That's all it does, and we're just going to pass that information back to block two. Also guys, a quick aside about block three. Uh, some of you may have noticed this uh, A equals zero. This is for if you want uh, to connect other stuff into this circuit. So basically, uh, as long as A is zero, this will continue sending the miner around in this kind of wiggly pattern. But the second that A is greater than that, it will turn this off. So if you need to send him back to the depot or something, you can do that. So similar to this little uh, circuit that we built in the first video up here, that's checking if he has um, a certain amount of copper in there, you could connect something like that. So when this hits, um, you know, when he, when he has a certain amount of copper, A becomes one and then he no longer needs to wiggle around and he'll go over here instead. This is also completely optional. You can completely remove this and just connect the wire right to it and it'll work just fine. All right, hopping back to block two, you'll notice again, we've got two more filters. This one is for X and this one is for Y. So now we've combined that output signal of time since last command. We've combined it with X, with Y, and then this bottom decider is still reading uh, info from this tile scanner. And basically it's just saying if there is an X uh, marks the spot on that tile, go ahead and let a check mark through. So this check marks then gets lumped in with our X, Y, and time since last command. It gets sent over here which then if the check mark is on, everything gets let through. So the check mark basically means there's a zone, it's a valid zone, we can send the miner there. This one is basically just making sure that the miner doesn't get an instruction more than once a second. Because let me show you what happens if the miner does get an instruction more than once a second. Like let's let him get an instruction every single tick. You get this, which it might kind of look like movement, but it's not really. It's 
they don't really mine much like this. It's it's kind of it's it's just too fast. You see, you can see their their uh, target changing very 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 quickly to the point where they can't really consistently move. So that's all this does. It's just making sure that 60 ticks or one second has passed. So now you can see he's only getting a new instruction every second or so. And just in case I haven't beat it into your head by now, make sure you send those dang IDs into those controllers and scanners. All right, we are rocking and rolling. We have got a miner mining, and he is wiggling. Uh, now we've got another problem. This copper patch has gotten a lot bigger, and we got a lot of guys over here waiting for instructions. So let's go ahead and introduce you guys to this signal split. However, before we send these guys some instructions, let's go ahead and turn that ore sniffer back on. There we go. Now we've got the whole patch discovered. Well, not quite yet, but it will be soon. Also, before it happens in your factory, if your miners decide to clump up in a small area like this and aren't going anywhere, make sure that you adjust the radius of the wiggle to kind of match the size of the ore patch. So if we do that and give him a little bit more fuel, oh, and then we take a look at his paths. Ah, much better. Now we're reaching down here a little bit. If you also want them to cover more of the patch uh, every stride instead of kind of circling in one zone, you can increase this uh, to two seconds or three. However, don't go too high on this because sometimes they sit on a spot for too long and don't move and that's kind of a waste of waste of time. So I've done some tweaking with uh, the time since last command and the radius and I found this behavior of the miner to be pretty good for this size uh, ore patch. You're probably going to have to play with those a little bit depending on how big your ore patches are. Because if they're kind of small like this one, or, uh, it might require a different set of instructions than like a gargantuan sized ore patch. Okay, so how we're going to control all eight of the miners at once is we're going to use this little thing called, a, uh, I call it a signal split. So basically what it does is you send in an ID. So I'm sending in number one and it's going to add uh, plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, all the way up to plus seven so that we can get um, unit IDs from 1 to 8 all following these same exact instructions. So if I run over here and show these guys, this is ID 2, ID 3, and this guy is ID 8. So we've got 1 through 8 sitting here waiting for commands. So this one is taking 1 and it's adding 0. So it's sending in uh, ID signal 1 to this tower. So this tower will control um, this unit. And you can see as we sort of go up these combinators, you can tell which uh, controller is going to be for which unit. So we've got uh, unit 8 to this guy, 7, 6, 5, pretty simple. Alright, so we're going to just do a quick jump. So this unit controller is controlling unit 1. So basically this red wire is sending in all of our data into the unit controller. So that's what this little thing does. All this, this... Uh, decider combinator also optional just there to make wires easier to see where they're going so I just want to show you guys real quick if I turn these um, if I turn this on so currently there's nothing coming out of any of these you select what signal you want and turn it on now we've got all the units lined up and now I want to show you guys if I enter these command or enter these coordinates all eight of these guys are gonna go to there at the exact same time look at that uh, so two things, uh, you'll notice they're crashing into each other quite a lot, and we're going to go over how to fix that. But uh, another thing to note is it looks like they're moving, but they're actually not. They're all just trying to go to the exact same coordinate, and you can see that by highlighting them and seeing that they're all trying to go to this exact same spot. So this guy, even though he's all the way up here, he's all trying to go there. So how you can fix that and prevent them from bumping into each other is you can take this signal split and just make sure that each one receives a slight offset. So I'm going to show you guys what I mean by that. Okay, so I've kind of simplified the unit controller set up here with the signal split. And I'm just going to show you guys what I mean here. So let's take this. Let's pretend that this is like a single snapshot of instructions. Our miner uh, type 4 has received the instruction to go to X100 and Y100. But there are also other miners there. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to disconnect this. And we're just going to add in a small little offset here with these guys. So we're going to say that's X. We want you to be 
five more than you already are. And you're going to output that. So now, oops, if we connect this to this, you'll see that X is now 105. So this guy is going to be five tiles of X higher than uh, the rest of them are. I hope this picture makes it a little easier to understand why the offsets are important. So the target coordinate is here, 100, 100 in the middle, which is our uh, center. But we don't want everybody crowding here because that's how you get them bumping into one another. So you want to have the offsets kind of perform this pattern. If you want a circle, of course, you can do a square. This is probably going to end up looking closer to a square. But, you know, you can really get creative with this. It doesn't have to be a circle. This is just how I'm doing it. The, the whole idea is you're offsetting the coordinates slightly for each miner so that they have their own little zone to work on instead of everybody piling into the center here. So now when we hop back to the one that works, look at that. That's a perfect example right there. You can see that they're all following a center tile, but they're all slightly deviating away from it, which forms a little square of mining like that. So that's the whole idea, guys. So I'm going to link a blueprint for this as well if you just want to build a um, mine. You can mostly consider this the end of the tutorial, although if you do want to stick around, I will be doing a breakdown of my blueprint for the signal split over the next few minutes, um, so just stick around for that if you're interested. Okay, first important thing to note about my signal split design is uh, the green wire is universal signal, so if you wanted to have them all execute the exact same thing, this green line is what you're going to want to send it down. However, if you want to address them individually, you're going to want to send it down the red line. So the red line from these uh, combinators, if you want to send a specific unit, a specific instruction, make sure to send it through the red line. However, if you want to send all of them the same instruction, send it through the green line. All right. So the next part, we're going to take our target uh, coordinates and we're going to, instead of adding uh, a constant like zero or five or something like that, we're just gonna add this uh, placeholder signal. So this blue signal when sent into here won't do anything. It has to be the AAI signals one. So you can use this one as kind of like an offset value. Why this is important is it makes it really easy to adjust how far away you want the miners from one another. So what I have here is we have our X and Y being sent out from here. This is our offset and then we're going to add our R for radius signal. So now our offset for the X is going to be plus 5 and it's going to be minus 3 for Y. And then we can increase that so we can make them wider. So now X has a 13 and Y has a negative 11 offset. And I'll show you what this looks like with the actual vehicles when we're demonstrating. So I've gone ahead and rigged up the proper offsets for units one to eight. Um, if you're curious which one does which, I edited this little image a little bit. So unit one, this is his offset. Unit two, three, four, and then I guess I mixed up or I messed up somehow and got five, six, seven, eight. So I've changed our 100, 100 target coordinate to somewhere in the copper field. So now when I activate this uh, unit signal on the signal split, all of them should form our nice little picture like we painted in Microsoft Paint. So let's go ahead and see if they do it. Here they come. Man, these guys are slow. I should have used faster ones. And there they are, just about there. You can see they formed exactly the same shape that we did in Microsoft Paint. So that was the goal. And let's go ahead and try to increase the radius real quick. Let's do 15. And now, for some reason, oh, that's because we have two. I will combine this into one for the actual blueprint, but just for demonstration. There we go. Look at that. How cool is that? So we got a nice little square of miners that we can change in size by just simply changing this R value. Awesome. Okay, so now the goal is we're going to mix in this uh, minor wiggle module into our signal split and get all eight doing the exact same thing. So right now we're only com controlling one, but I've rigged it up here so that one is controlled using our new signal splitter. This is the exact same uh, check and time since last command signal as it was right here in block four. It's just we're going to have uh, one of these for each one of these signals. And I just want to show you that it is working. Also, just a quick note, I filtered um, 
all four of these things that we've lumped together, which <laughs> seems counterproductive, but we only want the check and time sense uh, last command going down this line, and we only want the X and Y going down this line, so that's why I've done that. Alrighty, I've wired all of these up to all units 1 to 8, and I've also added in a variable uh, delay signal, so instead of having to go through every single one of these uh, times since last command and change it, we can just change all of them from here. And let's take a look at the results, guys. Drop that shit. <laughs> Just awesome, guys. Thank you guys again for watching. Uh, next video, we are going to cover how to uh, set up haulers to come grab the ore from the miners so they don't have to bring it themselves because, as we saw, the miners are incredibly slow. Uh, we also may learn how to set up a fuel, a fuel truck. So a guy that just simply goes to the fuel depot and brings everybody else fuel. So, hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace out.